America. Okay, by me on America. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Well, we got a fun video today. Damn it. My little happy hump, happy humpers. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, 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 lug nuts and the uh, wrench to get them off. The point of this exercise is having a spare tire and having a place when you need to change a tire and not being able to get the lug nuts off does you no good. Why even carry the spare? Just, just give up. Hurl yourself off a cliff into the void. So we're going to uh, get, I'm going to show you where and how to get a uh, alternate lug wrench and socket because the factory one is just crap. It's, gar it's literal garbage and it won't work. Um, it's the one in that little black case that goes under the seat down there with all the other tire stuff. Um, what is important to know, I suppose, is that the scissor jack that comes with the ProMaster in that little black plastic case is actually quite good. It, it, it pivots, unfortunately, like this, so the van can fall off the jack. If you jack the van up and get in it, you'll make enough motion to make it fall off the jack, but you can get it back up off the ground with the scissor jack. Scissor jack's fine if you uh, know how to use it. No reason to go out and buy a floor jack or something like that. And it gets the tire up off far enough the ground. That's all you care about. So we're going to talk about where and how to get the uh, an alternate uh, breaker bar, this is known as, uh, a lug wrench, you could also call it, a tire iron, as it is known colloquially around here in Barber Tucky, and uh, like so. I also, and then we're going to have a huge argument, an internet argument, with old guys talking about lug nut torque specs, because I'm going to give you some reasons to deviate from the factory torque spec, uh, but that'll be in the, anyway, so let's have our video. All right, I got I gotta get back to West Side Story. All right, you salty freaks, what you do is you point your web browser or your damn self over to Harbor Freight, which I think is called Princess Auto in Canada, Canada, and you pick up a $22, 25-inch, half-inch drive breaker bar. Those specs are important, the uh, half-inch and the 25-inch uh, long thing breaker bar there. You see it on the screen, pretty straightforward, not too complicated. Then while you're there, you'll mosey on over to the socket aisle and pick up a single 21 millimeter half inch impact socket. Four dollar. Hard to go wrong. All right, kids. Here's your Harbor Freight 25 incher. Here's your Harbor Freight 21 millimeter. Insert. Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay, anyway. So the bright idea here, the bright idea here that I'm going for is that it doesn't matter so much what the lug nut torque is, provided that you are the one that can take it off when you put it on. So if you put it on as tight as you can make it, then you will be capable of getting it off. Um, what you don't want is it to be so tight that you can't uh, take it off, regardless of strength or size or weight or tub or, or beef, um, because that's what we're trying to do is take wheels off, for crying out loud. I would personally ride in your car all day long with 70 foot pounds when some, uh, you know, 125 pound, 80 year old lady tightens them. I'm fine with that. As long as she can get them off, uh, it's a thing. But what I'm gonna do is do it by feel. And I have a feeling, I, as I say, the gun I used to tense these already, uh, I think we'll put them right at about 105, but we always check it. Sometimes we check it with a torque wrench and then sometimes we get lazy and we just check them by hand, but we always check them because you don't wanna make that mistake. One other thing I should point out while my fat ass is down here is that something I saved for this part of the video because you will have noticed once you jack it up, you can't get the lug nuts off of the wrench because the wheel will turn instead and you'll have to put it back on the ground to hold the wheel or you can have a friend hold the brake, but that's just a way of things. All right, kiddies, I'm gonna show you a little trick here about this whole thing that makes the whole McGilla easier. When you're putting the tire on and taking it off, I have found that if I park my fat ass on a stool, what I can do is put my feet under here and pick up on the tire with my toes. I have, I'll leave one in here, but if, whether I was getting them off or on, it doesn't really matter. No, I should say that, but, but I can pick up on the wheel to install or uninstall it. That's rather helpful. A stool helps. If I don't have a stool, I have to kind of get sideways and it's heavy and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, we're here to talk about something else. I'm gonna be, I'm going to be putting anti seize on all these. You don't need much. You need a little, just a little bit to prevent rust. Seals out the water is all it does. Now this anti seize can be any kind of anti seize. Could even be grease or oil or whatever. These anti seizes uh, would change the torque spec. If we lived in a world where the absolute torque spec was the most important thing in the freaking world, which it isn't, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute here. But I'm just getting a little bit of 
snoop on here so that uh, the next time you go to do this, it won't be as difficult and it won't get worse because it's corroded and rusted and blah, blah, blah. All right, kids, here's the science of it. See this bolt? It's rather large. I mean, it's it's a beefy piece of metal. And But the important thing to know is that what takes the load, the vertical load, when this is clamping the wheel to the hub, is this, this pilot area here. And you can see that it's concentric so that it self-centers and so on. And even if this fell out, there's still a lip that the wheel center, the hole in the center of the wheel would grab onto. But the vertical load is taken up by the by here, I'm sorry, here on the lug nut, not by the force of it going in. The clamping force that you're putting on with the lugs, let's say you put each of these to 100, so that's 500 pounds of force. But what's it doing? All it's doing is holding the wheel on. The only force it has to counteract is as you make a turn, say, uh, the van's going this way, or if the van was turning left, this tire wants to fall off because it wants to go to the outside of the turn. There's more than enough two bolts would hold it on. These bolts are gigantic. They're not gonna snap, they're not gonna break. That's the way the force is taken. So, and if you think, well, he's crazy. He's, he's a crazy fat man. What's he saying? The answer is, once this is tight, I dare you, just go ahead, pull this wheel off, break all five bolt bolts, see how much force that would take. I would argue that that would probably take on the order of 100,000 pounds of force to make all five of those bolts release the, the flange of the rim from the, from the brake hub, the hat, the thing. It ain't gonna happen. So this fascination with excessive wheel lug torque is, is pointless. It just has to not fall off. That's all it's gotta do. I guarantee you, you could put a hook here and pick up the entire van by the strength that these five bolts have, guarantee. I don't know how you do that or why you want to, but I, the wheel is not going to fall off and its vertical loads, as I say, are taken by the center hub and taken by the sides of the lug nuts. Having them tighter just makes them weaker. What are you thinking? If you happen to have a van with one of these center caps, one of the holes in this, this one, is elongated so that it goes on over the lug nut and then you can install the rest of them. Anyways, I go in here. Yeah, that's right. That's what I feel just out of personal feel is 105. Now that, amount of torque will be relatively easy for me to get off. And because you have a real breaker bar and not the crap tool, you could always do that, which I will show you higher and show you my dance moves. You can use the foot. Now you can use the foot in both directions, but I kind of think that defeats the purpose. Let's see if I'm right. I've set my torque wrench to 105 foot pounds. Let's see where I was. I mean, maybe I'm low, I don't know. Let's find out. Dead nuts. Dead nuts. The torque wrench clicks when it reaches 105 pounds. Yeah, 120. But anyway, you get the idea. But this factory spec of 143, stupid and harmful, and people on the ProMaster boards and forums will regale you of tales where they went to a tire shop and the tire guy keeps bringing out ever bigger and bigger guns and then they get out a torch and finally they snap the bolt off because it's too tight. I have this theory that the bolts tighten up over time to a certain extent. I don't know, I mean corrosion obviously, but it just seems like you leave them here and they'll be tighter to get off. But you see where I'm going with all this. The point is that, of this entire fucking video is that if you can't get the wheel off, having a spare is dumb. What good's it gonna do you? You can just look at it and wish you were, yours was round like it. Why pay for it? Why buy it? You're gonna have to call a truck or some such. So carry the tool that will uh, get it off and, and put them on yourselves. And I would argue that when you buy the tool would be a good time to just go out there, loosen up each one, put a little anti-seize on it. It's fun, you do it, you sweat, you exercise, you bond with the, with the machine. All right. What else is there to talk about? I, 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 <laughs>